Um, I don't know the breakdown statistically, like what percent. Um, I know that particular patient, at the end of the video, which I didn't show, she said, I'm just going to kind of live with it for now. I don't have a plan for transplant. Um, a young, young patients like that sometimes will recover native function. It's not, she had um, postpartum cardiomyopathy, so it was more of an acute heart failure. So, I don't know the true answer, you know, what percent of all patients are chronic versus acute heart failure, um, or the average life expectancy on the pump. I can, I can find out for you. Yeah? So I just kind of want to second the idea, like they're getting in touch with their people and their coordinators, and they can be really helpful. The guy, so, you know, he was actually there for something totally unrelated, and he had a guy, he's like, Orbital cellulitis or pre cellulitis, and uh, his battery's gonna run out. And we were actually fine to like discharge him, like medically, we were gonna like send him home, that's fine. But they like, they were like, well, if you can't use battery, you like, can bring it, sent somebody like with the battery to get him, and they just took it and finished evaluating him from right at uh, your where which institution was affiliated with. But if you have any questions, even if it's not related to all that, just call them and get them on the board, they'll be extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Second, that, that article that uh Grim Chimer sent out from emergency, I forget which article it was in, but it also commented that they'll, for battery issues like that, when they can't plug into the wall, the coordinator will know who else is in the area and someone else with an elevated battery will often be able to bring you a battery if you need it. Like, I don't know if there's a high enough volume around us, um, but those coordinators have a lot more resources in that regard and it seems like a community that would be willing to help out itself knowing what it's like. Yes. My guys had a spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage, which apparently is a known complication of the ones that are pulsatile. And of course, he was anticoagulated. Oh. And it was, then the question was, should we intubate oh, him? The transfer team from Sinai, we called them and they were like on the road immediately to come and pick him up. But the question was, should we intubate him before we send somebody who's anticoagulated and bleeding? I was PGY2, so my senior clearly was in control of the situation. But, you know, what medications do you give this hemodynamically unstable, altered mental status, intracranial hemorrhage patient to intubate them? It was really an overwhelming experience, and I needed more friends. Can you reverse that? No. 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 <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> Right, I guess 
as a Hail Mary if they're dead and I guess there's no more harm that can be done. You know what I mean? While you're waiting potentially for CT surgery to come. But I know that's where I'm most ready. Yeah, I think it was like rubble EM. Thank you so much.